Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome here. This is your host, Ma'awi Taka. And we're going to continue our series, the Prophetic, Prophetic Chronicles, talking about the prophets from Adam alayhi salam up to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have covered already the creation of Adam. We spoke about the first sins. We spoke about the enmity and the hatred between Ad, Iblis and Adam and the promise of Iblis to misguide Adam and his children. And then we began talking about the prophets after. We first mentioned the prophet Sheath and prophet, um, uh, and prophet Idris, but they were before mankind began to engage in shirk or engage in idolatry. We spoke about what was Tawheed, Tawheed being Islamic monotheism, the belief that only Allah alone is deserving of worship, something that Adam knew from the very beginning and his children all knew that only Allah alone is to be worshipped. There was no idea in anyone's mind that there was any idols that could be deserving of any worship. They didn't worship any trees or rocks or anything like that. They didn't worship spirits or jinn. They only worshipped Allah alone. But as time went on and Iblis, just like he deceived Adam السلام, in paradise and convinced him to make a sin, also, he convinced mankind to do the same kind of sin. And the sin for mankind, which Iblis really wanted mankind to engage in, is shirk, idolatry, the worship of anyone else besides Allah. So we saw how Iblis encouraged mankind and deceived mankind even, if you say, to worship others besides Allah by encouraging them to make statues and images of righteous people so that telling them so they can remember their good deeds, remember the righteousness that they, did, that, they, that they did. Hopefully they'll be inspired by their good deeds. And when people forgot the reason why they did that, then they, he told them, actually, your forefathers, they used to ask them for things, ask them to ask Allah for things, and therefore shirk, idolatry, crept into the Ummah of, of Adam, the sons of Adam. And as we mentioned before, with Noah, was the first one to invite them back to Tawheed, back to the religion of Adam السلام, they didn't listen after 950 years of da'wah, after 950 years of talking to them and encouraging them, they didn't listen. And then Allah sent water to drown them out and remove and cleanse the earth from those people of shirk so that therefore the progeny of Adam can continue upon monotheism, upon Tawheed. And then we mentioned just in the last episode, the people of Ad, or the people of uh, the people of, of Hud, I should say, who are Ad, and Hud was sent to them people, and he was told these people, who come to Islam, come back to the worship of Allah alone, and just like the people of of, of Nuh, they didn't listen, and the people of Hud, which was Ad, they eventually were destroyed with strong winds that lasted for ten uh, for seven nights and eight days, up until there was nothing left of them on earth or any remnants of their existence. This is what happened twice before. Yet, the message or the story continues. So we now have, moving on from the people of Hud, who was Ad, we mentioned in the last episode that from Adam, his son Sam, Sam had a, 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 another son called Iram, and from Iram came Ad, and therefore the tribe of Ad. Moving forward now, again, from Iram, the same person, Iram, son of Sam, he had another son called Thamud. Thamud, we know Thamud has been the tribe of Thamud, but just like with the, the tribe of Ad, Thamud began from a person, an individual. And he had children, and their children had children, and children, and, and so on and so forth, up until we come to Prophet Salih. Prophet Salih was sent to his people of Thamud. And they, you could almost say, that the tribe of Thamud were cousins, were distant relatives of the people of Ad. So it was similar people from the same progeny, from the people of, of, of Iran, who came from Sam. And they were, uh, had their prophet sent to them as well, but after, um, uh, after Hud. And that was Prophet Salih salam. Now the people of Thamud were unique in the lands. The way they had their buildings was very unique in that Allah gave them strength and gave them knowledge and gave them ability. What was the ability? They had the ability to go to a mountain 
and carve their homes from the mountain. Something which is amazing to think about. The people of Ad, they built, one of the things that made them special, they built tall, 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 tall towers, tall pillars. But with Thamud, rather than building something, they, they, you could say they fashioned what was already there into a home. So rather than taking bricks and putting these bricks together to make a home, they actually got a mountain face and built from the mountain their homes. This is something very unique and special about the people of Salih um, and something that Allah gave them, that ability and that strength um, over the, all the people and had dominance in the land and they were one of the strongest people of that time. So what was unique about Salih is that he, when he was sent to his people, they knew who Salih was and he was highly respected. The people of, of Thamud, they had high expectations with Salih. So he was perfectly chosen from Allah to guide the people and give them the best opportunity for guidance. They even said to him, we, we, we had good expectations from you, we expected a lot from you. Why, why are you bringing us this message? But he was sent to his people, as Allah mentioned in the Quran, that he was sent to his people, saying to them, Worship Allah, you have no God besides him. So the people of Thamud, much like the people of Ad, and just much like the people of, of, uh, of, of the people, uh, the Ad people and Nuh, they would uh, turn to Shirk. The Thamud also did the same. So, uh, so Salih gave them da'wah, encouraged them to return to Tawheed, much like uh, Hud before him and much like Nuh before him. He encouraged them, telling them that he's not here to get reward, just like the previous messengers. He encouraged them to worship Allah alone, highlighting the fallacies of the shirk, to informing them that this thing here that you worship is just only names that you've made up yourself, only something you've created in your own fashion, in your own hands. And they, the people of, of, of the, the, the Thamud people, just like the Ad people, they were close to the people of, of Nuh. The knowledge of Nuh hadn't been forgotten yet. Just like when Hud said to his people, reminding them that, that, that this is very soon along, not, not, not too long ago, Nuh, the people of Nuh were destroyed. Don't get this, let, let the same happen to you again. So likewise, Salih tried his best to encourage them, to bring them back to Tawheed, but they didn't listen. But what's unique about this story, however, or what's strange or different about this story, is that with Thamud, they, they challenged him. They said, bring us uh, a sign. If you are truthful, bring us a sign that you, this is, that you're a messenger from God. This is something that was never happened before. The people of, of Ad, or the Ad people, they rejected the message and they argued. But they never, and they even said, bring us the punishment if you are truthful. But the, people, the Thamud people, they said, give us a sign, give us proof beyond the logic, beyond the argument, give us proof that you are truly a messenger from God. And this is something definitely that, 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 that Salih could do. Allah can give him any signs that he wants and requested. And it's only if Allah wills to do so, it can happen. The scholars have said that when it comes to signs being given to someone, it's not always a blessing. Let me explain. If, a, if Allah tells you and gives you a message from a messenger saying come to Islam and gives you good enough arguments, you have opportunity to think, to reason, to contemplate, to accept the message. But if you ask for a conclusive evidence, something that, is, that removes all doubt whatsoever, then it becomes a problem now. Why is it a problem? Because if you now reject after that, then there's no reason to continue the conversation. There's no reason to continue this discussion. You've been given clear-cut signs, and if rejection occurs after this, nothing is left other than adab, punishment. So that's what they asked, and that's what they got. They asked for a sign, and Salih told them, look at this mountain, a sign is going to come from this mountain. And Allah caused a mountain to split into two. And came, what emerged from that mountain was a she-camel, a naqa. It came from the mountain. This naqa was not just a normal naqa, it was a huge, enormous uh, she-camel. So not only did the camel just come from a, a rock face, which is clearly not normal, it was absolutely huge. That was their sign. And they were told, don't touch the camel. 
leave the camel alone. This, you ask for a sign, now you have your sign. And this was their sign here. But, but some things happened. Because the camel was so huge, when it drank from the well, it literally engulfed and took all the water inside the well. So the people complained. What's this camel, what's this camel doing? We want to have food, we want to, we want to irrigate our land, we want to feed, feed our, our cattle. And you have this camel now is causing us problems. So again, rather than humbling themselves, remember this, same thing we had in Iblis, the lack of humility and humbleness, rather than humbling themselves, they tried to make issue with this camel. Because this camel was a sign of the fallacy of their ways. It was a sign that they're, that they're not upon the straight path. So rather than accept the sign and submit, they tried to find fault. So a compromise was made. You can drink or take water from this well on one day, and on another day, the camel will take a drink. So we have turns. The camel will just come and drink every day. You have a turn, and you have a turn. That was the compromise that was given to them, and it was a reasonable compromise. And why not? You asked for a sign, you got a sign. You complained about the water, you got what you wanted. They were given so many opportunities, a messenger, a sign, and a compromise. Surely that's enough. Surely there's nothing else left to complain about. Surely they can move forward, submit to Allah, worship Allah alone, and return to righteousness. Surely that's enough. So after they were given what they asked for, they asked for a sign, and they got a sign. They asked for uh, some kind of help with regards to the water. They were given a day to have their water, and a day for the camel to have their water. But they were told one simple thing. Don't touch the camel. Just like Adam السلام, was told, don't eat from the fruit, they were told, don't touch the camel. But yet, what did they do? They plotted. They came together and said, we want to be rid of this camel. We want, to, we want this camel to be gone and dusted. We want to kill this camel. So they came together, they made a plot to kill the camel. So one of them who chose to kill the camel, or they made the lots, and one of them came up and said, I'll do the, I'll do the job. I'll come and do aqar. Or aqar al naqa. They want to do kill the camel. So he came up to the camel and stabbed the camel and ended the camel's life. This was the beginning of the end for Thamud. Salih warned them, he told them, do not touch the camel. And they came together and they plotted and they killed the camel. So Salih told them, told them okay, I warned you, I told you. You were given so much warnings and advice, but you don't take advice. But I'll give you three days. He told them the adab will come, the punishment will come to you, but it will come in three days. If you just imagine that, this actually indicates the sheer level of rahmah, mercy given to Thamud. Just like the sheer number of mercy given to Ad and the people of Nuh. All of these people, all these nations, were given so many opportunities. They were given so much evidence to support the message, given them to allow them to return back to Tawheed. What did they do? They rejected the message. This reminds me actually of a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, Kullu bani Adam al-jannata illa man aba. Every one of the children of Adam will enter paradise except those who refuse. So the companion said, or some of the companions said, وَمَنْ يَأْبَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Who would refuse, O Messenger of Allah? The Messenger of Allah said, مَنْ أَطَاعَنِي يَدَخُلُ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَقَدْ أَبَى Whoever obeys me, who will enter paradise. But whoever disobeys me, has refused. What's key here is the last few words of the hadith. Whoever disobeys me, has refused. This indicates that every single person who will be punished in this life and the next will be because of the choices they make. It's not necessarily the actions that our bodies do because maybe sometimes we intend to do something and something else happens. But we're talking about choices and they had a choice to accept but they chose to refuse. They were promised three days of respite, they were promised three days left Maybe they could repent. Maybe they could say, I'm sorry. 
but they didn't. And Salih and those who believed in him, because there were some who believed in Salih, they were given opportunity to leave the place of, uh, uh, of, of Thamud, which is known today as being what's called Madda in Salih in Saudi Arabia. They left that area and then after that, the time had come. What was the punishment? What was the, the, the destruction? It was a single blast of sound. One sayha, one absolutely ridiculously loud uh, sound that came from the heavens and an earthquake that shook from underneath. Now this is interesting because the question is, can sound kill? And the answer is yes. Sound is very dangerous. There's an example of this actually, historic example, of a volcano that erupted near Indonesia and the eruption was so loud and so violent that the sound of this eruption was heard loud in Australia and it was said, the historian said it sounded like a cannon blast. If you can imagine that, an eruption, a volcanic eruption so loud that it sounded like a cannon blew right next to you in a whole new country, it was said that the, 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 the violence of that was so much, as in this, this, this um, um, uh, volcano blast was so much and so violent that within a hundred mile radius, all human beings that would have been there would have died instantly from the blast. So that's exactly what happened to the people of, 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 uh, of Saleh, the tribe of Thamud. A single enormous blast destroyed everything and everyone. And all that remained of them are their homes. As you mentioned, their homes were made of the sides of mountains. I can even see the mountains today. Even the Messenger of Allah, Allah who, was, who was traveling with some of his companions to do a, a, a battle of, I think it was Battle of Tabuk. They passed by the people of the, the place where Saleh or the people of Saleh or, Th or Thamud was and they could see their homes and what they had carved from their homes. So nothing of the, the tribe remains beyond what they left behind of their homes and what Allah has informed us of their actions. This is what happens to those who are obstinate. This is what happens to those who refuse the message of Islam and there's no excuse that can be made for them. It's something that they had done themselves. And finally, Allah mentioned that Salih, he turned back to his people and said, how can I have regret of people who don't take advice? This is the importance of taking good advice when it's given to you. Inshallah, we'll continue our story next episode, beginning with the story of Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.